I'm Melinda and I'm here with Case of remodelblog.net and we are going to install the nest. So my name is Case and we're going to be replacing this thermostat here today. It's an old IPT thermostat with a mercury switch in it. And when we throw this out, you want to make sure that you um, dispose of it the same way as you would hazardous materials, such as old batteries and old electronics, smoke detectors, that kind of thing because this is not something that we would want in the landfill. Now the reason we're replacing this and that Melinda is getting the Nest thermostat is A, the Nest thermostat is beautiful, it is well made and it is programmable in many different ways. This is completely manual, so you, so it's, I mean, you come home to a cold house, you first have to turn the heat on, same thing in the morning, and whereas with a programmable thermostat obviously you can set all that stuff to come on. Um, at a certain time beforehand. Before we do anything and before we disconnect any wires, the first thing we want to do is shut off the furnace. So for that we have to be in the crawl space and I'll see you there. Here we are over at the main circuit panel and we want to turn the furnace off. Thankfully it's marked right here. So that cuts the power. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and remove the thermostat and once that's done we'll be right back. So here are the two wires that come out of the wall from the old thermostat. There are no markings on these wires and your particular situation might be different. You may have four wires, you may have six wires, you very well may have color coded wires. In our situation we were lucky that there were just two, but we were unlucky in that these wires are not marked. So we don't know where they go at the furnace. So in order to figure out which wire goes where, we have to identify them. Now th there are several ways to do that. One is with the help of some fancy um, testing equipment, which we're not going to buy because Melinda and I later are going to see a movie. We're going to meet a friend and go out for dinner. So we need money for other things than testing equipment. We have our priorities straight. So what you can do is we have, first of all, we've taken an extension cord and run that, f run that from here all the way down into the basement to where the furnace is. You don't have to have a continuous extension cord, it could be a long cord made up of several smaller ones. But, and the important part is that you have, in, in our case, we want to have a, a part of the extension cord that we can readily identify. So, in this case, let's just go with the grounding pin. And on the female end of the extension cord, you will see the two rectangular openings where these prongs fit, and then there will be a round one for the grounding pin. Then, with the aid of a flashlight, and we'll show you exactly how this works. We'll take this apart and we keep the head where the lamp is in and these two batteries. Now, and then what we will do is we'll connect... Put your hands up higher. Oh. So we'll have these two batteries. We hold them like that. We'll make this prong here touch the bottom and then with one of these wires we will touch the light and with the right wire hooked up the circuit will be complete and the light, the light will come on. These things. But yeah, but remember that I need to be able to... Right, right, right. Okay, so here we go. And, yeah. But you also want to make sure that this wire does not touch that. Because then it won't. So now the light comes on, so which means that this wire is the same one that corresponds with the female end of this down in the basement. So at this point we can mark this and so we can keep these separate. Melinda marked the wire that corresponds with the one upstairs that made the, uh, the flashlight go on. So we'll take this back out of the extension cord and we're done with that. And this, by the way, is the grounding pin that corresponds, or the grounding inlet that corresponds with the pin of the plug that we showed you upstairs. So, out with this. So we'll make this the, we call this the red wire, because we marked it as such, and we'll hook that back up to th this existing splice that continues on to the, to the furnace. Okay, so now we will actually go and unbox this puppy. Thermostat. Shiny. Mm, they went there. <laughs> Before we even installed it. So let's see what's in there. So we have here a the base of the nest with the wire terminal. So it comes with its own high-tech little screwdriver and it even has drywall anchors to help install it. 
It also has ooh, various plates, various plates to help cover up any holes you may have in the wall if there were larger thermostats installed. Uh, there's even a metal one, and the instructions explain that if you happen to have a square metal electrical box in your wall, that this plate can be used for installation. It also notes that you won't often see these metal boxes uh, in residential settings. They're more typical um, in offices and other commercial buildings. So, the optional mounting kit. Anyway, I guess the next thing we're going to do is install this guy with the help of... There were two anchors that looked like this. There are drywall anchors or hollow wall anchors that came with the nest. And perhaps the ones supplied were of a, made of a cheaper plastic. Anyway, they stripped out almost right away. So we had to take a little trip to the hardware store to pick up some new ones. And those went in right away with no problem. In order to cover the old outline of the, uh, the, the, outline of the old thermostat, uh, we are using the larger cover plate that the nest comes with. So before you install it, um, you can put the base on as shown, and then you use the screw holes to the left and right of it. Hold it, here are the two installation screws. The top wire here already went in and that has the little marking on it that we identified earlier. There's a little built-in level so you can position it the way you want it. I liked having my own two-foot level. It was a little bit easier to, to um, level it. And then these connectors, you basically press down on it, feed in your wire and let go and it is spring-loaded. So it's automatically in place. And that's that. And here's the magic moment. Oh snaps into my place. goodness, snaps into place, and there it is. Hmm. I wonder if it will say something. <laughs> it's probably charging. It's reading something, I can see a green this, light this flashing. This is going to take several hours. You can see it's... I know. Right, so, do so here it is, actually working. We already set up the Wi-Fi for it, so it will update its software or its firmware automatically later. What do you think? Are you one happy customer? I am one happy customer. I'm there, very happy. There you go.